If you watch one video before your math exam, I want it to be this one. You don't have much time to waste. I'm not about to waste any more of it. But this will be less than five minutes long. My top tips as a student who got grade nine of GCSE maths, a star in A-level maths, and who studies a glorified maths degree. Giving you my top tips on how to do well in that exam on today's episode of Sustainable Study Secrets. Hello guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to today's episode of Sustainable Study Secrets, a new series where I tell you how to do well in every single one of your exams. Without further ado, let's get on with it. First things first, you might think, oh my goodness, I'm so cooked for maths, I don't know anything. Yeah, you do. If there are loads and loads of things that you don't understand, the likelihood is that you just had a fundamental misunderstanding of a mathematical core concept. You cannot have that. When you resolve that one thing, everything starts to make sense. It's like you have a crack in your foundation of knowledge. You've got a little tower built upon it. When you repair that, the tower will stabilise. You've got knowledge on how you solve simultaneous equations. You've been told by your teacher time and time again, but you just don't seem to understand why it works. Why do you not understand why it works? Because you don't know how to rearrange an equation. Well, why do you not know how to rearrange an equation? Because you don't fundamentally understand that division is the inverse of multiplication. That's a rather rudimentary example. I hope it makes things more clear and it's more important for those complex topics. So go through your specification and red, amber, green checklist it. If you don't know what red, amber, green checklisting is, then check my channel. I've got a whole video on that. But essentially just red topics, as in if that came up as a question in the exam, you couldn't answer it. Amber, you'd be a bit, mm, you'd give it a go, but you wouldn't be, com you wouldn't be confident green, you're happy. And when you have your specification that is all rag checklisted, oftentimes you'll see that there is a red topic at the beginning and there are not many red topics for a while. These later topics do rely on your, your fundamental understanding of those earliest things. So always, always try and resolve those red areas in chronological order. You need to be doing practice paper practice in order to get better at maths. I feel like everybody says that, but something that not everybody says is that if you fundamentally don't understand how you do something, you need to watch a video on it. You can't just sit at your desk for hours not knowing how to solve an inequality and start crying and tearing your hair out. You need to watch a video on it. Just go onto YouTube. There are so many great YouTubers. Mr. Barton Maths, TL Maths, depending on if you're GCSE or A-level, just find somebody who's explaining this concept to you. And it doesn't even have to be a GCSE or A-level teacher because maths is math. Practice paper questions. If you're aiming for that top grade, I'm sorry, you need to be able to do the hardest questions in the paper. Those questions are at the back of the paper. Those questions that you make you want to tear your hair out because they're tying multiple topics together. You're making synoptic links between different areas of the specification and you need to be able to do that if you're aiming for that top grade. And the only way, unfortunately, to get better at tying these multiple topics together is by doing practice. You need to keep going over it. Maths is a muscle. Maths is a tool. It's not like other subjects where you can just remember how you do things. So you develop a toolkit and you apply it to new situations. At least the best mathematicians do. And they understand why they're doing what they're doing. The best way to keep this sharp is by practicing every day. Of course, if your exam is tomorrow, then you can't really implement this now, but you can implement it until your next exam. Be doing some sort of maths every day, even if it's not an element of your revision. Your GCSE maths, be doing the Corbett maths five a day, every day while you just eat your breakfast or something. You don't have to dedicate ages to doing it. You do need to keep it fresh in your mind and keep your tools sharp. Never leave any question blank. Make some sort of guess. At least then you have a chance of getting a mark. Not, you're not completely sacrificing any chance that you had. The best way to do this is by picking out key words from the question and identifying the topic. You might not understand how you solve this question on Pythagoras' theorem. But if you can bang down the formula, you probably got a method mark. If you can try and shove some numbers into it, at least you've given it a go and you might get a method mark. There are ridiculously easy marks on offer in GCSE and a Maths. Math. Just make sure that you're always writing something and not leaving anything blank. But as well as that, never get stuck on anything. Do not get stuck on a question if you don't know the answer. Okay, think about it. Give yourself a few seconds to try and figure it out. Use the keywords of the question. But if you don't know, you need to move on and come back to it at the end. Maths is one of those things I really, really highly recommend you leave time at the end of the paper to go back and check your answers for. Because there's so many, there's been so many times that I've realised I've made a stupid mathematical error, like saying three squared is six. And I believe that was under five minutes. So best of luck in your exams. Thank you very much for tuning in. And I'll see you in the next episode of Sustainable Study Secrets. Bye guys. Love you.